I split 100 players across four tribes, each with their own biome to see which tribe could build up their civilization the strongest to take down their rivals. Would the tribes be able to work together, or would some players be out for blood against their own kind? Take your guesses as to who you think will win down below, and let's find out. This is 100 players simulate tribal civilizations in Hardcore Minecraft. As all four teams ran from their spawns, the clock was ticking down before they were allowed to invade each other, so teams got to work right away to start upgrading their civilizations. Most players followed the same plans of chopping down the closest trees that they could find to start making some tools, but the desert team found themselves, as expected, in the middle of a desert. Nowhere near any trees, so had to start exploring their island straight away. As they ran through the sand dunes, they spotted a pyramid in the distance, so formed a group of eight people to go and check it out. And as they entered, they quickly realized that this place was a maze. Oh, it's a maze. Some other members of the desert team had gone the opposite way into the Badlands and spotted a small saloon that they could gather some food from, and then started upgrading their weapons by tearing this place apart. Over in the snowy mountains, these guys had punched a few trees before they realized they were going to struggle for food. Since their island was covered in a thick coat of snow, animals and grass was pretty rare, so they started clearing up some of the snow to expose some dirt, and then started to set up a small farm right next to a frozen lake with a few seeds that they were able to find. The rest of their members then headed underground to start mining up resources for weapons and armor. The jungle team were also starting to make advancements over at their island. After finding a small treehouse with some loot... Whoa, 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 Let me look at this. Oh, there's an enchantment table up here. Uh, grab it! We'll get a diamond pickaxe and pick it up. My team were off to a really good start. That's right, I'm the leader of the jungle team. As a few of my members continued to explore the jungle, they stumbled across a small temple that was filled with loot and traps. So as they went in to explore, they were quickly caught out. Yeah, I yeah. think there's a witch in here. Okay, I'm coming over now. Oh hey, no! If you're, if you're gonna go yeah. into the, the temple, what? Oh, oh, oh. Hey, how did you die? Oh, These deaths knocked the jungle tribe down to 23 players already. But luckily for us, we weren't the only team to lose players already. Back at that desert temple, one of their players had set off a trap. If you're doing mining, who lit the TNT? Who lit the TNT? This trap also killed two of their members. How, How did you guys die? They pressed a button in the desert temple and exploded. Oh my god. You guys oh are so god. dumb. Oh my god. But even though this place killed two of their members, the rest of their explorers were safe and managed to get most of the loot from this place and then escape before they died to a trap as well. But now, they faced a new problem. Just like the mountains, this desert had no real source of food. So they had to resort to the oldest trick known to man fishing. Their leader ran to the coast of their island to start gathering some food for the rest of his team. Over on the Swamp Island, their team was working together really well, exploring through their land, and most importantly, not dying. On their journey, they found an abandoned witch hut, and after looting this place up, they decided as a team to set up a small camp here. And see this little witch hut, we'll <laughs> just set up a little camp on this little island for now. Guys, I'll start setting up a farm. They built some tents, a farm, and even trapped some chickens in for extra food. They were off to a really good start. Back at the desert, the fishermen had gained a friend, and this group quickly expanded from two, to three, and then to four players that were all fishing for the rest of their team that were still out exploring their island. But this fishing paid off with more than just food, when they started fishing up rare items like enchanted books, and even gold. Oh, six gold blocks? Yeah. Uh, it's a lure one. Oh, I just got a book. I'm I got Pro 3, I got a Fortune 3 pickaxe, nobody mind diamonds, nobody mind diamonds, nobody mind diamonds. The rest of their team had been making their way through the Badlands and found a small village on the south coast of their island that looked out over the waters into the swamp. The guy that found it got some hay bales, looted some chests, and then alerted the rest of the team about this village, which led to most of them heading over to check it out. During this time, the Mountaineers had made some really quick development over on their island. After working collectively as a team, they had set up a massive farm to feed all of their members, and the miners had collected enough iron to supply most of their players with armor and weapons. My members over at the Jungle Tribe had also been working away in the caves trying to find as much iron as possible, whilst I stayed up on the surface setting up a farm for our team to get some food, since we were getting pretty hungry. But it seemed this food just didn't want to grow, so I was stood around waiting for a while. 
Luckily though, our miners seemed to have a gift. We were able to find diamonds really easily. Some members may be a little bit easier than others though. This is Wilde Crazy. He wasn't just lucky when it came to mining for diamonds, he was clearly cheating to find them. That's right, he was x-raying. And the worst part was, he was on my team, the host of the event. Sadly at the time, we had no idea he was cheating, but trust me now, he is banned from all future events. So this is your opportunity, if you're a legit player and don't cheat, feel free to join my discord down below to get involved with these events. Anyway, as Will the X-Rayer started making his way to the surface, sadly, another member of our team was killed by some lava as he made his way to some diamonds. No! 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 no. Oh! What happened? Someone died? What? Please! Okay, who is- how are you guys dying? Falling or something? Yep. We were now down to 21 members before PvP was even enabled, putting us at a huge disadvantage to all of the other teams that had not lost anywhere near as many players as us. One of the teams that hadn't lost any members yet was the Swamp Team. They were still going strong at their camp with 25 players, and even better for them, their miners weren't cheating and were all super honest with each other when sharing their resources. Fine, I surprise. have taken 11 iron out of the furnace, but I've replaced it with 11 raw iron, so... This team worked really well together, and with a great campsite coming along, someone even brought some cows and sheep over in case of a hunger event later on, which was something the other teams hadn't anticipated. On the mountain island, their team leader had come up with a plan though. Whoever's got cobblestone, we're going to head up the, uh, the mountain, the, to the west, the west of the lake, go up there, and we're going to make the base there. They were already on the base building stage of their development. In this event, each team has to create some sort of location for their team beacon to be placed inside of. And the Mountaineers chose to build it right on top of this massive mountain, so that they could look over their land and have the high ground against any enemies planning to attack them. The jungle team were much further behind in progression than everyone else, because instead of making armor and preparing for a battle, my members decided to feed pandas. What me and Alinak decided to get to work in setting up a place to put down our beacon, and thought the best idea was to make a tree house. Alinak. Alinak, if we, um, if we do it in this huge tree, everyone will probably get distracted by the temple and probably miss the beacon, right? They won't find it and they will focus on the temple, not on the tree. So with our location chosen, we got right to work setting up a ladder inside of the tree and making an area that we could build a tree house and place down our beacon. Alright, the tree house is done guys. I'm, uh, I'm putting the beacon down up here. This is, we're confirming this spot. The jungle and the mountain were the first two teams to have their beacon down. But even though the Mountaineers were making really good progress as well, some members in their team started arguing and calling each other out after one player was finding a lot more diamonds than the others. Don't you think it's a little suspicious you keep finding diamonds? It's block kind of suspicious, but... Did, did they not block x-ray? It's not suspicious, you're not suspicious, you're fine. Uh, why are you telling me suspicious? You're not suspicious. I'm suspicious. using mining method. If you all say it's not suspicious, I'll say it's not suspicious, so... Their leader tried to calm them down before it got a bit too heated, but it was unsure within the team whether those two teammates could be trusted with each other. Back at the swamp, their leader was starting to hollow out the underpart of a tree to recreate, get this, Shrek's house as their official base, since someone on their team had a Shrek skin. So once their leader, Wallow, had an area dug out, he invited the whole team to a meeting so that they could place down their team's beacon. Um, before we go in, I'd like to just say, Welcome to Mess Swamp! Alright, are we ready? Yes. Three, yes. two, yes. one! Yes. Bushwreck! Yes. Let's go, oh, how are you? Bread for everybody, bread for everybody. Yeah, After the beacon placing ceremony, they had a slight issue with their farm after someone fell in and let the animals free when they tried to get out. The sheep are escaping! Oh! oh no, not the, the sheep! Not the sheep! Man! The desert team had finally all regrouped at the village on the south coast of their island, and instead of getting their beacon down like everybody else already had, of course, they went back to fishing. Even though it seemed like all of this team was just fishing, it turned out that that fortune book that was fished up earlier on had been passed down to a miner that was going around using fortune on every diamond that the team had found when mining, meaning they had a boatload of diamonds thanks to the fishers. So secretly this team were actually super rich. One of their members even managed to get their hands on some saplings for apples. But they quickly started an argument within the team over bones, because some members wanted to bone meal the trees for apples, whilst a few other people wanted to use it for food. 
I'm taking these down. Give him the Vinkus. You're not correct. I'll toss him to L. L fake. L fake. L fake. L fake. L fake. Toss him to Vinkus. To your to your right, my guy. You're standing next to him. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. Throw the bones to that guy. Throw the bones to that guy. I saw you pick them up. I saw you pick the bones up. Throw them out. Throw the bones out. Thank you. To create a compromise, they made this contraption here that allowed the farmers to turn some of their spare crops into bone meal for the trees, which worked perfectly and allowed them to get a bunch of apples. And after a lot more fishing and chopping, they realized that time was running out before they had to place their beacon down. So they started working on their official base. They chose one of the nearby hills and started building up some walls on top. Then their leader soccer went down below and placed down their beacon. Now all four teams had their bases claimed and with only five minutes left until phase two, teams didn't have long until they'd find enemy players invading their land. With this in mind, the swamp team called a meeting to organize which players of theirs would be heading out across the waters to explore other islands. But whilst this meeting took place, something extremely unexpected happened between two of their members that nobody could have predicted. A betrayal within the team. Whilst the player went AFK, his teammate killed him whilst no one was looking. How did someone we'll die from our team? team. Wait, yeah, someone, someone just died. Yeah, some how? Yeah, I'd like to see how he died. Oh. Due to everyone being distracted at their meeting, the inside man was able to get away with the kill, leaving his entire team confused about their first team death. And as they were busy wondering how their teammate died, one of their miners underground went digging in the worst place possible and was crushed by a load of gravel, eliminating another one of their members. It's fine, I think- What? How are people oh. dying? Swamp had quickly lost two of their members and some people in the team were really starting to worry that they were going to be next. Over at the jungle island, we had already selected our explorers. So a group of us headed out and made our way through the jungle to the north point of our island where we could see the land that belonged to the mountaineers. We hopped in the water and started making our way over, just as phase 2 started. This meant that players were now allowed to leave their island, PvP was enabled, and beacons were allowed to be broken by other teams. As us jungle explorers made our way over to the Mountaineers Island, the coast looked clear. So we left the boats behind and started sneaking through the snow and up the mountains to try and get a higher view over this land. Once we made our way up, we looked down through the valleys and there was no one in sight. The Mountaineers were much further away from here, all back at their camp. But as we continued to move forward using trees as cover, we spotted some signs of life, so we carried on following the trail for clues. And eventually, we spotted the castle that the Mountaineers had built. Wait, there's a tower, there's a tower. That'll be it, that'll be their base for sure. Just watch out. Wait, 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 wait. there's a farm, there's a farm. Oh, there's a guy down there. Yeah, I can see someone, I see someone, I see someone. I see someone. Right, should we go for the kill? I think we should move in for it. They've seen us. They've yeah, hundred percent seen us. I think they have, for sure. Um, I don't think Sword we're supposed here. to have the Sword flag here. Sword is here. Where? Sword is here. Which Reach side? Here. Guys and I stay back. All right, we'll go back into the base. We'll get in, get into the base. Oh, oh yeah, they're, they're coming towards us. There's loads of us. Yeah. Loads of us. Run, 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 run. Get out of here. He had spotted us and alerted his team. And before we knew it, we had an entire army of players charging towards us. Knowing we were heavily outnumbered, we ran away into the mountains to escape from their soldiers and quickly made our way back to the coast and hopped in some boats after losing them in the snow. We weren't the only team to have stepped on another island though. As phase two started, Swamp sent some players west towards the coast to check out the jungle. But a member from the desert had already beaten them to it and was already on the jungle island starting to explore. Back at Swamp Camp, one of their members was bored of waiting around for the rest of his team, so set off on a solo mission to see what he could find. After a small trip out of the swamp in his boat, he started crossing the channel of water between the swamp and the desert, which was right where the desert team had set up. Sokka, the leader of the desert team, spotted the rogue swamp player out in the water all alone and wasted no time in grabbing a boat to chase down his enemy. Gold. That's not our team. Go, yeah. single diamond guy left Who side. I'm gonna go find uh, out. I'm gonna go that's find that's out. As Sokka made his way into the swamp, his teammates reminded him that this could be bait for a trap. I'm gonna follow them and see where they lead it's me. Might. Wait, what's so okay? Be careful. I know, I'm being careful. I've got my F5 open. He decided to turn back and join his team, just in case they were right. And now the desert team knew that as soon as that rogue player made his way home, the whole swamp team would know exactly where their camp was. And they were right. When he got home, he told the team what had happened, which caused the explorers that were about to enter the jungle to turn around and head back home, just in case the desert team decided to charge into the swamp and attack their camp. 
but over at the desert, everything was very quiet because that wasn't their plan. Get in this house, get in this house up here. Get in this house. Where? Everyone everyone, pile into this house and let's all just sh crouch, just crouch. Crouch in this house, crouch in this house. Yeah, yeah. The desert team all decided to hide inside of the village house, waiting for the swamp team to attack them, meaning that both teams were now stood waiting for each other to attack when neither of them were going to. The swamp team even decided to take a team photo with the thought that they were going to lose some of their members in their defense. Now, before we carry on, I want to quickly thank MC Pro Hosting for providing the servers for me to host these events on. If you guys want to play some events just like this with your friends on your own server, check out the link in the description and use code SWORD4000 for 25% off any server plan. Now back to the video. Whilst these two teams were wasting their time waiting for each other to attack, the solo desert player, Aerokun, that went on a mission to explore over at the jungle had found our camp. And the entire team had no idea that he was here watching our every move. As he hid behind a small wall he created, he waited for the perfect opportunity. And eventually, he saw a potential kill and started attacking one of the jungle players. I'm getting attacked, I'm getting attacked. You're still in range of being seen. Yeah, you're fine. I'm getting attacked. Uh oh. Wait. I'm dead, I'm dead. Wait, I heard it. He's attack. Before backup arrived, he was killed and the team had no idea what happened. News broke out to us explorers about the death, just as we finally made our way back onto our island from our trip earlier. And as we split up running through the jungle back home, Aerokun again waited hiding in some bushes and spotted Lacuna running right past him. So he saw another opportunity and attacked him. Yeah, no, one of the desert, I'm attacked by desert. Right, crap, right. Crap. I'm, I'm damn I'm it. Another one of our members was killed right in front of my eyes. I was 20 seconds too late, and as more backup arrived with me, Aero started running to escape from our island after taking down two of our members. The chase continued through the jungle, weaving in and out of the trees, and as Aero arrived at the coast, he made a leap of faith off the cliff into the water down below, and escaped in a boat. We rained arrows down on him, but he was gone. His solo mission was a success for him and his team, but for us on the jungle team, we had lost another two players, and now we were the smallest team on the entire server, with only 16 players remaining. As I arrived home, I made sure our beacon was still protected, and then looked out over the jungle unsure as to what was coming next. Sadly, the answer to that was the Mountaineers. When we escaped from their island earlier on after they chased us away, they headed home to their fortress and chose some warriors to head out back towards the jungle to track us down. So they left their team behind and traveled through the snow, then crossed the same waters we had previously before making their way into the jungle, ready to attack whoever they saw. Oh, there's something down there right there. Oh, is there? All right, just, just be very wary, guys. Stick together, stick together. The wall doesn't lead to anywhere, though, so. Oh, I see some people up there. I do. The tree. With the jungle temple in sight, they started moving forward. But they were caught by one of our jungle guards. Both teams charged towards each other, and the first war on the server was underway. Guys, help! That's a lot of them. That's the whole oh team. Oh my god! There's a full mountain team after I'm, not, I'm not chasing that. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. They're closing the tree. Yeah, yeah that's my they're right, right under, under us now. Hey, they're over here by me. Over by me. You're going up our mountain. Oh, they're, going, they're coming from the side, they're going from the side. Help me, help me, I'm dead, I'm dead. The mountain team had lost almost all of their warriors, and the players back at their base could do nothing but watch the deaths being announced one by one in chat. There's only one guy left, just go chase him quick. Just go, go for him, he's running for the shore. All but one mountain warrior was dead. Megamind69420. And with no backup, he made a run for the coast and hopped in a boat. Up to now, we had knocked them down to 16 players in total, and if we could kill this final mountain player, we wouldn't be the smallest team anymore. So we hopped in boats too, and a long chase over the oceans started. We travelled far, far away from home, and eventually realised this guy was never going to stop running. So rather than following him, we pulled up on the snowy beaches of the mountain island and decided to go for this guy's beacon that was still hidden within the walls of his team's fortress instead. Once we got closer, we saw their guards on the walls and realised this wasn't a battle we could take as a duo. Even though we had killed a load of their members, almost all of their remaining players were back in this base. 
So we ran back to the coast before we were spotted and started making our way back to our jungle island. Sadly for us, we weren't the only ones heading here though. After Aerocon escaped from us in his boat earlier, he returned home to tell his leader all about what happened. But even though he had killed two of our members, his team weren't too happy about him going off alone. Arrow, congratulations. Oh, Arrow, don't, 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 go off, don't go off alone again, because I, I mean, we did well, but that was kind of stupid. That hey, wait, no Herp, Herp, maybe we do what we get, do we dig in. We just try to get their beacon, so that way we can uh, claim them. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, want yeah, the troops. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah me, Arrow, couldn't Herp can go private VC and scout. We're going to go try oh. and take out Jungle's beacon. Okay. So with their team split into two, they headed over towards the jungle, leaving only a handful of players back at their base to protect the beacon. Wolfies, if anything oh, okay. happens to our beacon because of you, I'm going to be so... As they made the trip across the waters, they started surrounding the jungle island secretly with their members, ready to attack us whenever they were given the go-ahead by their leader. But once again, Aero decided he didn't want to wait around for his team, so started charging the jungle tribe straight away. This forced the rest of his team to come out of hiding, and now the desert team were launching a full-blown invasion on our jungle camp. Yeah, this yeah. guy's dead. This guy's dead. He's a one-shot. Nice. Nice. Wait, Don't kill all of them. Okay. Oh, okay. Let's go. Let's go. He's dead. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Nice, nice. Take it down. Take it down. It's okay. Are you okay? It's okay. I'm okay. good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm in the. Okay. I'm in their base. Once again, I wasn't home during this attack. I was still making my way back home from the mountains, and by the time I had arrived back to the island, almost half of our team had been slaughtered by the desert's invasion. And now, our enemies were searching every single spot inside of the temple, trying to find our beacon to take over our team. Whilst all of this happened, the Swamp Tribe had been watching the deaths of both teams being announced in chat from this battle, and they realized that the Desert Tribe were most likely launching an attack on our camp, so this would be the perfect chance for them to check the desert whilst all of their enemies were split up in battle. They rushed into boats and started making their way to the coast, and once they arrived, the desert village that their scout from earlier told them about was in sight. The desert guards that had been left behind to watch the base were caught by surprise and were heavily outnumbered. God! I said the fishing, the fishing killer fish. They're retreating, they're retreating. They're running. They're fighting one now. They're kind of holding here. Don't chase, don't chase. Don't. Alright, guys, I got one. Oh, someone's, someone's in our base, someone's in our base. We gotta go back, we gotta go back. I found the beacon, I found the beacon. I'm going in. It's inside of that, you know, the mountain. I'm breaking, I'm breaking it now. I got it. I got it. Where's it go? Since the desert beacon had been broken, all of the desert tribe had now become part of the swamp tribe, including all of those at the jungle temple that were still searching. They broke our beacon. What do you think I said go back for? Oh my gosh, you guys suck. Now they all had to follow the orders of Wallow, their new team leader that had knocked soccer off his throne. The Swamp team now stood strong with 36 players in total, by far the largest team on the server. So after sharing some loot with their new teammates and stealing whatever valuables they could from this base, they all started heading over to the jungle to help them find our beacon and finish off our team. As I arrived back at my island, I ran straight towards our camp ready to defend our land and take down the old desert players. But I heavily underestimated their strength and I was killed right outside of our temple. Guys, I think I'm gonna die. Ah, oh, I'm dead. No. Our beacon was still completely hidden at this point. Luckily, the temple created a perfect distraction. I see some redstone, but I can't see their beacon. We need to keep I can't find something. their beacon. Yeah, I cannot find the beacon. I literally cannot find yeah, it. Yeah, I don't know where the beacon is. But the swamp team continued to charge through our island, killing our members, which thankfully included the cheetah. Will the x ray He's in the water now. Nice, we got, we got him. him. After searching for longer than they would have hoped, the Swamp Team gave up with the search for our beacon. After killing all but four of our members that managed to either hide up a tree or escape into the waters to get away from them. So instead of searching any longer, the Swamp Team decided to move onto the mountain island to regroup their 36 player team, share out some of their loot, and then come up with a plan on what to do next. I guess the plan is we need to try and take out mountain. Well, George, it was an honor, but I'm sorry. It is. <laughs> <laughs> the mountain team had no idea that basically everyone on the server now was after them. And a member of the jungle team had also fled to the mountains to hide from the swamp people, which didn't look like it was going to end well now. But after scanning the lands, eventually, 
The swamp team arrived at the fortress, and now the mountaineers had to stand their ground and defend against this army of warriors. I think we're being surrounded. I think I see them. Wait, are those the people? Oh, yeah, no. Nah. Oh, no. Full diamond armor. The swamp team charged up the side of the fort and built their way over the walls, storming through and killing every player in sight. Whereas, once again, Aero went on a solo mission on the other side of the fort, taking on three mountaineers all alone, and somehow winning. The charge on the mountain fort was a huge success. The guards were being slaughtered, and after the fort was cleared, the search for the beacon began. Anyway, no members, I'm gonna seven. find their beacon one way or another. Move back. Uh, they're getting oh, shot. watch out, TNT main place. Watch out, everyone move. Everyone move. You're gonna blow. You're gonna blow. Soccer. Watch out, you're gonna blow yourself oh, up. Oh, I did it. Oh, no, we suck it. Fuck <laughs> With one explosion of TNT, the old desert leader sacrificed his life. But with this explosion, he was able to break the mountain beacon as they breached the tower. Although losing one of their strongest men from this, the swamp gained another seven members for their army as they took over the mountain tribe, bringing their total player count to 42. But even with 42 players, they still had no idea where the jungle beacon was, or where the remaining jungle players were. This treehouse had served its purpose up to now of hiding the beacon perfectly. But of course, who better to spoil that fun than Aero, the rogue master? As all of the swamp team decided to head back to the swamp, Aero had other plans. He went back to the jungle island all alone once again to try and find that beacon one final time. He was so convinced that he was going to win, he even started snacking. Whilst he was here, his whole team finally all arrived back at their camp in the swamp. But Aero was determined to find this beacon, so he started working his way to the top of the temple, and then started to pillar into the sky. He scanned the nearby area and spotted our guard hiding up a tree. Now of course, because this guy is crazy, he jumped off his pillar risking everything. But he bucket clutched his landing and started to make his way towards the tree. There was no stopping him now. George, yeah. Uh, one of our members, I believe, has run away, um, and he has found that beacon. All right, well, it's over. Go to this guy, and now I'm gonna oh. break the beacon. Well, the swamp team had won. They had been an unstoppable force throughout this entire event, planning their attacks perfectly, taking down every single team's beacon, and. Although some players may have gone rogue and almost risked their lives, they worked together as a team perfectly, making them the strongest biome of all. If you think you could join a future biome and take down the Swamp Team, join my Discord down below to get the chance to join in future events. But for now, the Swamp Team is the winner. Goodbye.